great start from uh, Josh Waters. He will get the jump off the, uh, the start. Probably Jamie Stoker was the, uh, the loser from the front row of the grid there, who got left behind as they make their way down into uh, turn one. It is Josh Waters. Up the inside of Scotty Charlton on the races at Suzuki from the second row of the grid. Looks like he'll slot into third position, Marty Craig, on the way out of uh, turn two. Robbie Bugden's up into second, so I've got Suzuki. Just it up there, Robbie. It was a good move on Robbie. Just slipped it up the inside there of uh, Scotty. So Suzuki's one, two, three down into uh, the first intermediate timing marker. And Wayne Maxwell, Jamie Stoker with a fair amount of work to do. Yes. Um, Glenn Allerton didn't get the same start this time around, so he's not going to be happy with that. Nick Waters in uh, eighth place, so maintained his starting position. Ben Attard is in fifth, Jamie Stoker in sixth, Glenn Allerton on bike number one is back in the seventh place on the Procon Maxima BMW. Josh is gone really hasn't he? He's a great uh, first lap for him, great opening lap. Let's see what lap time he does on a, from a standing start. Intermediate two, he had half a second lead over the rest of the field Marty and uh, as they make their way down towards the other start finish straight now. Great so, drive under the straight there by Josh. Robbie Budden is uh, trying hard to go with him, it looks like uh, one of the Hondas is up into uh, third place now. That'll be Wayne Maxwell, who's got the better of Scotty Charlton on that race. Is Ed Suzuki, who uh, for the second round in a row has absolutely blitzed them off the start. Come flying through from the second row of the grid. What can he do down into uh, turn one? Look like there's a little bit of position changing in there as well as there's a massive gaggle of riders after Josh Waters and Robbie Bugden have really just got away from the rest of the field. Wayne Maxwell's also starting to uh, get away. Looks like at the moment we've got... Uh, is that... Uh, well, one rider losing out of there, but I think that may have been Scotty Charlton just got uh, overtaken by one of the other uh, Hondas making his way through. Yeah, Glenn's making his way through. We see what the guys can get across here. Uh, Josh just did a 12-7 from a standing start compared to a 13-3. So that's over half a second uh, faster. His lead was 0.6 of a second as they came round to complete the first lap. Ben Avard also a big mover. He's moved up into uh, fourth place. Allerton's up into fifth as well. Scotty Charlton's gone back to sixth. Stoker back in seventh place on bike number 27. Wouldn't have expected that, uh, Marty Craigle. And Nick Waters, I would have expected him to be up in eighth place and getting away with the superbikes. And fierce determination, I imagine, will keep him there for quite a few laps. Absolutely. Wayne's going to try and get across here. And uh, not, not going to do it with those lap times. Josh, you did a... Uh, 107.4 and Robbie at 107.7 and Wayne Maxwell at 108.1. So down through turn one now, we're looking on the super screens at Glenn Allerton on the Procon Maxima BMW, bike number one. We've got Jamie Stafer right behind him trying to uh, find a way past. Of course, uh, Maxwell and uh, Jamie Stafer uh, have both ridden for uh, Team Honda Racing. In fact, uh, Wayne Maxwell was the 2008 Honda of the Super, Superbike champion riding the Honda CBR 1000 and he's now got the, uh, the new recruit for Honda, been there for the last couple of years, Jamie Stouffer right with him, Scotty Charlton still putting in an excellent performance, Nick Waters behind him, then it's Chaz Hearn, the next rider through after uh, Chaz, Ben Henry on the uh, Cube Racing GSXR 1000 Superbike in 10th place, Linda McGee the second of our, a third of our pro stop riders back there in 11th place on the second of the Procon Maxima BMWs. See who gets the draft this time down the straight. Josh has got away from uh, Robbie Bugden. Uh, Wayne Maxwell also uh, trying to uh, really get away now and uh, catch up to Robbie Bugden in third place. Of course, points will be utmost on Wayne Maxwell's mind because uh, he only had 25 points at Phillip Island. That was because he had a DNF in the first race after a whole road out of Marty, but came back in excellent fashion in race two with a race win. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be able to uh, get across here to the guys. He's done a 108 flat as Wayne, and Josh is a 107.5. So we're back to a 108 flat then is also. Uh, 108 3 for uh, Ben Attard in fourth place and a 108 2 for uh, Glenn Allerton. So a tenth of a second being taken out at the distance between uh, uh, Ben Attard in, uh, in fourth place and, uh, and Glenn Allerton in fifth at the moment. So Jamie Stoper in sixth, Johnny Charlton still in seventh place, Nick Waters still in eighth. Looks like uh, Chaz Hearn has really got uh, Ben Henry all over the ducktail and coming fast is Lyndon McGee on that Procon Maxima BMW. Chris Trouncet is the next rider through. And he's uh, going to line up behind Ben here onto the straight. I think he's going to try and draft him. He's going to have to try and uh, get past Ben and then get across the lane. Just looking back in the field, looks like Shay Diggins is having a good battle there with uh, Sophie Lovett, the daughter of Phil Lovett on the, uh, the KTM RC8R. And uh, Jamie Stouffer looking for a way down the inside of uh, Glenn Allerton, but uh, Allerton is late, late, late on the brakes down into turn one. There's no way through there for the two-time Australian Superbike champion. 
So uh, between those two, there's four Australian Superbike champions, Marty Craigle, uh, just between uh, Glenn Allerton and Jamie Stoker. Quality field, and we've got Josh Waters out there. He's past Australian champion. Also uh, second place Bobby in Bunker, New Zealand, four-time New Zealand champion. Josh Waters also uh, second place in this prestigious Suzuka eight-hour race uh, last year as well with Yoshimura Suzuki. He's raced in uh, three rounds of the Superbike uh, World Championship for Yoshimura Suzuki last year as well. Yep. But um, look at Josh Waters' consistency. His fastest lap, Marty, a 107.468. His last lap was a 107.5. Yeah, he definitely got in a class of his own today. If the guys are really going to struggle to beat Josh, I think he's definitely um, he's done three laps here within one-tenth of a second. Interest really, though, is uh, Wayne Maxwell. What can he do on this last lap? Looks like he's closing the gap down a little bit to uh, Robbie Bugden. As he comes across the start-finish line now, a 108 four for Robbie Bugden and a 108 flat for Wayne Maxwell so he's taken nearly half a second out on that last lap the gap between the two of them now down to about 0.8 of a second so uh, Maxwell starting to close in now and as you said he does look after the tyres well Robbie Bugden renowned to getting on the gas hard his tyres may start to suffer absolutely Robbie's obviously um, slowed down a little bit there and you can see visibly especially in this last part of this uh this lap Wayne has got right onto the back of him Robbie Bugden also sliding the uh Peter Redfenton uh, prepared machine out of the turn five as they make their way up towards the, uh, the Dunlop hairpin. Don't know what's happened to Robbie there. He just parked it virtually in the hairpin there on the way in. Ben Abbott also uh, got his hands full with Glenn Allerton and Jamie Stoker that have really caught up to the uh, back of the second Suzuki GSX-R1000 factory machine ridden by Abbott, a new recruit for the team this year. But uh, there's a man that uh, hasn't got anyone near him at the moment, Josh Good Waters. for Josh. On the super screens, it's very smooth out Isn't of uh, turn one for someone that learnt their trade on doing uh, dirt track dirt racing. Tracker. Absolutely. You'd be riding the rear brake there, coming onto, onto the straight, trying to keep the front wheel down and get good drive. Last lap for uh, Wayne Maxwell and Robbie Bugden. There was uh, not much in it. Robbie Bugden actually was uh, four one hundredths of a second faster than Wayne Maxwell. So uh, the gap now is sort of stagnated. On your super screens at the moment is Nick Waters still running around in eighth place. But uh, unfortunate for Nick, he's lost the toe now from uh, Scotty Charlton's superbike in front. But look at Nick Waters wrestling with the uh, Jeff Windsor prepared Honda. This goes to show that he doesn't mind a little bit of physical exertion, Nick Waters. No, I like the way he rides the bike and he lets the uh, bike work, work underneath him. He lets it move around underneath him, takes the weight off the seat and just stands on the pegs and just lets the bike work and he work underneath him. About one second the gap between uh, Nick Waters and, uh, and Scotty Charlton, but their lap times on the last lap were pretty much identical. So uh, Nick Waters putting in a great ride here on the uh, the Honda CBR 1000 Pro Stock machine. In fact, the leader in the Pro Stock category looks like Chris Trounson has also had a problem on the uh, the VIP Pet Foods Honda, and he's slipped back to the other tail end of the field. Yep, another a 108 flat from uh, Josh on the last lap. Let's see what he does this lap. A 108.2, so the drop, lap times are going down just a little bit, but he's still faster than everybody else. Well, Robbie Bogdan was 0.3 of a second faster than Wayne Maxwell on that last lap, so he's increased the gap out now to just over one second, Marty. 1.1 1. 1 seconds I the think difference. the team's probably giving him the hurry up. And uh, Robbie Bogdan, known as one of the most aggressive late breakers in the other uh, field, and also uh, gets on the gas very, very hard. You'll see him rip the right handlebar off as he uh, get, applies the throttle. Maxwell may come into his own now. We're at half race distance, of course. This race reduced to 14 laps. Seven laps have already been covered. And uh, our race leader, Josh Waters, is making his way out of the Dunlop hairpin, torturing the Dunlop control tyre rear slick of that uh, Phil Tate prepared Suzuki GSX R1000 and making his way up towards the technical part of uh, the circuit from turn 10 down to 14, which will take him back onto the start finish straight to complete eight laps. Looking back in the field, you see Shay Diggins, one of the leading Northern Territorian riders in 20th place at the moment. These guys relishing the opportunity to race with the best races in the country. Yeah, he's going to get the lapper on the straight away here, so that'll be a good one. He can let the guys at the back uh, know that the boys are coming through. So hopefully he can uh, just move over a little bit. That might have been McMillan on bike number 24 that uh, just had to give way to uh, an absolutely flying Josh Waters made his way uh, past on the straight. That's uh, probably the best place you can uh, get a back marker, Marty, on the, uh, the front fit start finish straight. And, of course, the speed differential between the locally prepared um, super stock machine or pro stock machine and Josh Waters' factory super bike would be incredible. Yeah, probably 20 kilometres an hour. When Maxwell uh, up into very, uh, turn very five. smooth on the throttle, eh? There's absolutely no movement at all from that bike. Maxwell on a lo long way around on the lap of there. So, uh, a lot of movement from Maxwell's Honda. 
through the bottom end of the circuit now Another as he slide, yes. turns right and uh, applies the throttle and uh, Wayne Maxwell looks like he's starting to uh, get the bike uh, a little bit out of shape. Robbie Bateman, surprisingly, looking incredibly in shape. And uh, Wayne Maxwell, I think it's a fair indication of how hard he's riding to try and keep the four times New Zealand Superbike champion in check. In fact, on the last lap, Marty, they were 0.2 of a second apart. Wayne Maxwell, unfortunately, 0.2 of a second slower than Robbie Bateman. Yeah, good job for Ben Adart here in fourth place. There's Jesse Wacker on bike number 88. Uh, unfortunately, the only Wacker brother uh, left in this race after Chris went out in uh, that uh, multiple bike incident at turn one in the, uh, the first start of this race. So uh, Josh Waters is through past uh, bike number 88. And uh, the next rider I think you'll come up upon will be uh, Sophie Lovett on bike number 17. Yeah, I would have thought Glenn would have been a bit uh, closer to the front in this one. His last lap's a 109 flat. So this is... Nope, he's left time to drop quite a bit. I guess they haven't got the setting quite right on that bike. Jamie Stafer at 108.9 right behind him, so uh, still 0.2 of a second behind Glenn Allerton at the moment. Jamie Stafer, of course, been concentrating this weekend on making sure that he makes that bike as easy as possible to ride. But uh, Jamie Stafer, Glenn Allerton, queued up right behind Ben Attard on bike number 12. Of course, Attard on the podium overall here last year, riding the Trinter Brothers uh, Aprilia. And uh, very early on in the season that uh, saw that bike just gain speed throughout the entire season. Yeah. But uh, Adard uh, jumping onto the new bike this year, put in a great performance, finishing on the podium at the very first race at uh, Phillip Island in the first round. But the real interest at the moment is, can anyone uh, get near Robbie Bugden in second place? The only man that can really do it is uh, Wayne Maxwell. And once now past uh, Ben Adard on bike number 12, Jamie Stafer uh, also looking for a way past Ben Attard on bike number 12 as well as they head up towards the top end of the circuit. Glenn is just dirt tracking everywhere. The bike is just not gripping at all. So I think everyone may be having a few uh, tyre issues now as we go into the, uh, the last third of this race. 14 laps to journey, 10 laps complete, 11 laps complete now for our race leader, so three laps to go. For Josh Waters, Robbie Bugden, Wayne Maxwell as they make their way across the start finish line. Then it's Glenn Attard, Allerton who's moved up past Ben Attard. Can Jamie Stafford get past the Suzuki as they go down into a turn one? I think he may have. Is that Glenn Allerton that may have run wide? Or is that a back marker that's getting out of the way? To wait and see. I think that may have been uh, one of the Wacker brothers that was getting out of the way of that uh, slate train of riders as they make their way through. Glenn Allerton, Ben Attard, Jamie Stafford making their way up into turn five now, followed by Jesse Wacker on bike number 88. So uh, good work there getting out on the outside of the circuit and letting those uh, riders that are having that hectic battle for four, fifth and sixth through. Josh is the only one in the eights, 108.4. Everybody else is in the, in the nines. So uh, Glenn Allerton actually uh, in the eights on that last lap as well as they uh, went through, but only just Marty. But yeah. importantly for uh, Glenn, he's managed to put 0.4 of a second between himself and Ben Adard, where Jamie Stouffer is still being held up, it looks like, by Ben Adard on bike number 12 back there in sixth place. Yeah, um, Josh had a 108.8, which is, his best was a 107.4, so... Well over a second slower. He's probably just just uh, about to put it into cruise control, I think. I tell you what, what a fantastic ride from Sophie Lovett, who after 12 laps has only just been lapped by our race leader, Josh Waters, who's setting an absolute cracking pace. So a big congratulations to Sophie Lovett for an excellent ride here on the KTM RC8R, which gives away probably about 25 to 30 kilometres an hour of top speed towards the end of that straight. Very good off the turn, but just doesn't have the top end. And she's put in a great ride here on the Lovett's Earth Moving uh, KTM RC8. It's quite a heavy bike too, isn't it? It's a lot heavier than uh, some of the other super bikes, and especially in post-stock trim, not a, many modifications allowed. She's about now to uh, give way to Robbie Bugden on bike number seven, who will be coming up uh, behind her very, very quickly. As Josh Waters makes his way down through turn 10 and uh, making his way down onto the other uh, start-finish circuit. And uh, we're just talking about... Probably, probably faster than uh, Josh on that lap, only by three tenths, so Josh has obviously rolled out of it a little bit. Just talking about Glenn Allerton, who uh, has got his hands full at the moment, uh, trying to uh, make an hour up through the dip and on the entry into Turn 5. Where Josh Waters is coming now, out of Turn 5, he's back to about 57, 60 kilometres an hour. So that's the slowest point on the circuit, Marty. Yeah. But uh, as he comes down now, back up to third gear and through the right-hander, makes his way up towards the top end of the circuit where he'll get up to over 200 kilometres an hour again before he throws it on the left-hand side of the bike, back to third gear, heads down through the tricky section, back down to second at about 80 kilometres an hour through the last corner, and once again accelerates up towards 300 kilometres an hour towards the end of the main straight. Yeah, just under 300, I think, Glenn was telling me that...